August 16th and I'm actually on my way to the chiropractor right now I go to the chiropractor pretty much every week been doing this for about three or four years now been having back problems since I was a kid and so this kind of helps to alleviate that um, so yeah I'm on my way right now but I want to talk about something that I seen on Facebook yesterday that really really disturbed me and the reason why it's so disturbing is because it's so many adults, like grown people, who are having this problem, and it just does not make sense to me. So anyway, so yesterday, scrolling on Facebook in between um, some training sessions that I was doing, doing a little studying and stuff like that, and I seen this ad for some new bank that style. I can't even remember the name of the bank, to be honest with you. I just seen the ad, and um, I guess... I don't even know what intrigued me to even check the comment section, I guess, because I'm a little nosy. <laughs> but um, so the ad was talking about how this new bank allows you to get your direct deposit two days early. And um, so I go to the comment section and there was so many, like the, the most popular question. Um, and sorry, I'm hitting some bumps on the highway, so my video might shake a little bit. But the most popular question that people were asking this bank is, do you have overdraft fees? What? Overdraft fees? And then it's crazy because um, one of the entrepreneurs that's in the network marketing industry that I know, he posted like a little short video um, showing that CNN reported that last year Americans spent $15 billion dollars billion with a B. <laughs> 15 billion dollars in overdraft fees last year. What are, what are people doing? Like are you serious? Of all the questions that you can ask a bank, you're asking about overdraft fees. Like I get it. You know, times are hard for people. Um, you know, all across the country. It just is what it is. But at what point do we stop allowing that to be the excuse? You know, people want to talk about, oh, there ain't enough jobs. It's a depression. I, you know, I'm not getting paid enough and all this other stuff. But at the end of the day, at what point do we stop blaming the school system? Do we stop blaming the government? Do we stop blaming the economy and start blaming ourselves? Like you, you can have this excuse when you're like, 17, 18. I would even give you up to like 21, 22. But after that point, you cannot blame anybody but yourself. We're in the information age for peace sake. Like you can literally find information about practically anything. Like I Google search and YouTube search like all kinds of stuff all the time, like just to study, just to like learn different things. And if you don't know what you're doing with your money at this point, like you need to research how to do better. Like seriously, it's, it's getting to the point where it saddens me and frustrates me that grown adults are still blaming everybody but themselves for their financial decisions. Hell, I see people like on my timeline who brag about, you know, what they just bought themselves or their children or whatever, and then turn around like a week later and talk about how broke they are. Oh, but my kid's straight. Oh, I'm broke, but my, my child got the newest Jordans or my child got the newest purse or my child got the new, like, are y'all for real? For real, like seriously. At 27 years old, I've never had an overdraft fee. I've never even came close to overdrafting my account. But that's because at a very young age, and, and don't get me wrong, I didn't grow up rich. I didn't grow up poor either. My parents didn't make the absolute best financial decisions and neither have I. I've made bad financial decisions as well, but I made it a point when I was 17 years old, I had just turned 17 when I went off to college, graduated high school at 16 and everything. Um, and I made a conscious decision to make sure that my bank account never got below a certain amount. And at 17 years old, that number was $1,000. And when I went off to college, I had my own apartment. 
So I had all that stuff paying for, you know, groceries and everything like that, all the house bills. I was 100 miles away from home, so I didn't live with my parents or anything. Um, and I still, I was taking 20 credit hours every 10 weeks, had a job where I was literally only making like $800 a month. Um, and I made it work. I still made sure my account didn't get below $1,000. And at this stage in my life, um, I pretty much, like at one point a couple years ago, I didn't let it get below $5,000 um, in my checking account. But that's because at the time I didn't really have a savings account. Like I didn't, I wasn't doing what I really needed to do with my money. But now that, you know, I have savings set up and, and investment accounts and stuff like that, I still make a conscious effort to make sure that my bank account never gets below fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars. Even in the last sixty days, I had um, a bunch of health issues and um, something I don't really want to talk about in this video. Um, but in the last sixty days, I saved twenty one hundred dollars. I paid off twenty one hundred dollars in debt, and I had about fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars worth of medical bills on top of my regular bills and stuff, and I still didn't get my account anywhere close to fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars. Like we have to make a conscious effort and a conscious decision to be better with money. Because the economy doesn't matter when your personal economy is thriving. And I'm so serious about that. Overdraft fees, fifteen billion dollars, y'all, we just gotta do better as people. You know, it's no reason why our country is the richest country in the world, but people are so poor because they make so many poor financial decisions. So like, seriously, if you're in this position, don't take it the wrong way. I'm not ragging on you. I'm not coming down on you. But like I said earlier, we're in the information age, so there's really no excuses. Get yourself in order because you want to make sure that regardless of what happens, what life throws at you, that you're always, always good. So I'm pulling up to the chiropractor actually right now. Uh, so I'll see you guys pretty soon. I'll talk to Sam. Hey guys, guess what we about to do? Mommy, what we about to do? Mommy, they can't hear you. What are we about to do? Family feud now. Now, if we don't get to family feud, it's because she don't know nothing. Oh. Okay. Y'all okay. gonna be able to meet some of my family. That's my mommy. Her fine ass mom. <laughs> my bad. You have problems. Anyway. Yes, so we are up here. We literally been looking for the place for like 10 minutes. Yeah, they gave us the wrong place. But anyway, so we about to go in here. It's a whole bunch of people here. And hopefully we make it, guys. Yeah, that's right. Hey, how you doing, honey? Hi. Look how we, hey. That's how we didn't know he came up behind us. We didn't hear it. <laughs> you ain't had your squishy pants today. We know you was coming up behind us. Man, y'all don't know. I'm a fashionist. I know how to, I know Not how to with sushi pants. Sushi pants are so 70s. Girl, play. Why you think y'all keep bringing what we didn't create it back? <laughs> no, I haven't seen nobody with sushi hey, since you, you did. Wait for that merry go round to come back around. Nah. Right Here's the line. That merry go round ain't revolved. Who else on standby? Who else? Alicia, but I don't think. Yeah, I know. I'm looking for your, your grandpa. What? What? She over here mad because we were supposed to have on black pants and a red shirt, but look what I got on. Yeah. Okay. How long is it? We was all walking in together. I can't tell. I can't tell. What up? Okay. Just Ha, ha, ha.
Go way over there. I can do it. Go with Miss Missouri's family. Uh, no, 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 no. Here, reach in. Here, 